All right, let's get started today. Hope everyone had a good Memorial Day weekend and getting back in the swing of things in the office this week. Um, so the topic for today, we're going to go over uh, a new feature we released uh, just a little bit ago. Um, it's shipping labels. It give, gives you the ability in FlexPoint to <clears throat> tie into your uh, carrier services, whether it's UPS, FedEx, or USPS, and purchase shipping labels uh, for your orders going through FlexPoint. Um, to do this, we'll leverage Ship Engine uh, to connect into FlexPoint and use that to generate the pricing and purchase the shipping labels. Uh, we'll also go over that whole process of setting up an account, purchasing the shipping labels, and then <clears throat> also discuss uh, attaching the shipping labels to the POs and how all that flows through FlexPoint. Um, again, anytime, if there's any questions or anything isn't clear as I'm going through this, definitely uh, post a question in the, the QA portion of Zoom, and I'll get to those at the next break. And then after we, we go through everything about shipping labels, if there's any other questions, you know, generally overall about FlexPoint, I'll be happy to answer those. Okay, so I pulled up my FlexPoint account here. And the first thing we'll wanna do is uh, connect our, our ship engine account with FlexPoint, so that way we can start managing the uh, shipping labels and get our accounts connected there. Um, so what we'll need to do is um, in FlexPoint, there is going to be a section here where you can connect your ship engine account and, and create that. So what we want to do is navigate over to our order section and shipping labels. And I've already connected an account here, uh, but what you'll, what you'll do is follow a link that will bring you to ship engine account here. What you'll do is log in, um, you know, provide all your information and create account, and they will provide you an API key, which is what we're going to use to connect ship engine to uh, your FlexPoint account. So if I wanted to fill this out here, And what this will do is bring you to a page to, to verify your information. You'll get an email shortly after that. And it will have an API key. So here we go. So this is a sandbox account, so nothing's live on this. Um, you can definitely use this to do some testing internally in your account, uh, but you can also follow through and upgrade to, to an account here where you can tie in your actual carrier accounts. Um, so if you have a carrier account with UPS, FedEx, or USPS, you'll be able to actually connect to those live accounts um, and actually use your, your pre-existing account with those carriers um, to connect in the ship, ship engine to purchase those labels. But once you do that, You'll get an API key here, and all you would need to do is copy that and go back to your shipping labels uh, section in FlexPoint and plug in the API key. And it's going to do a quick connection test here. And when it does that, it's going to see all the accounts that you have already linked with your ship engine account. Um, that way, it's it's tying into your own accounts using those accounts you already have set up for your rates and, and purchasing the labels there. Um, if you don't already have uh, carrier accounts with them, um, you can I believe you can set those up directly through Ship Engine, or you can go directly through uh, USPS or UPS FedEx 
um, set those up and then come back into uh, Ship Engine and connect those directly. Uh, but once you do that, you'll see that's tied uh, to these accounts here. And these are available to use for our rate shopping or for our shipping labels. Um, if you're already using our rate shopping feature and you've uh, created a free ship engine account, that actually will not work for this uh, because when you create that free account through the rate shopping program in FlexPoint, it creates a basic um, shared account that you're using just for rate shopping. So if you are using that, you would need to go and create your own account through ship engine for this. And when you do that, that'll actually tie your rate shopping to your own account once you do that. Um, so in the long run, it'd be better if you are gonna be using shipping labels to um, so just go ahead and create this so that way everything is tied into one singular account. So now we have this connected here. Um, there's a few things that we wanna make sure. Um, based on the carriers that you're using and the sources that you will be uh, purchasing shipping labels for, you would, uh, it's a good idea to go ahead when you're in here to have a address set up on the source because this will be used to calculate the uh, origin location of the shipment. And then it'll also use the customer shipping address when you go to purchase a shipping label to calculate those. You can always, once you get into creating a shipping label, modify or add a or, uh, origin address on there. Uh, but this is always a good idea just to plug it in here because that way it's already saved and it'll pre-populate whenever you go to purchase a shipping label. And then also on your shipping methods here, uh, when these are set up, the global method here is what is going to tie in to ship engine. So if you don't have a global method selected here for your, your shipping values or your shipping mapping on your sources, you will want to update those and save those because that's what's going to pre-populate when you go to create a shipping label uh, for that source. Any questions so far? Again, if anything comes up, feel free to post in the chat and I'll get to that question as soon as I can. All right, so let's actually look at purchasing a shipping label. Um, so we've created our ship engine account. We've connected it to FlexPoint. I've set up an address on my source and I've confirmed my shipping methods have a global carrier attached to it. So now what I'll need to do is go look at my orders. And what we'll wanna see is an order that has a PO that has not been processed. Um, so this, this order right here is in a status that will allow us to create a shipping label. So once you generate a PO and it's unprocessed, you'll navigate down to the actions button under the PO section and you'll click buy a shipping label. So there's a few sections here that we'll, we'll wanna take a look at. So uh, what I just mentioned, the ship from address, this will be the origin address for your shipment. This is gonna pre-populate from that address field on the source page that I just showed you. But you can also come in here and edit this if you know it's actually gonna be shipping from a different location for whatever reason, maybe it's, maybe you know, oh, this order is gonna ship from one of my other warehouses or something like that. So you can come in and modify this. Uh, one thing to note, when you do modify this on this screen, it does not automatically update the pre-saved origin address on your source. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you do expect uh, this to update when you do that, you would have to go back to your source and modify the default if you do wanna change that. Um, to a more permanent solution there. The ship to address, this is populated from the shipping address on the customer order. Uh, again, you can modify this if necessary, uh, but typically you know, whatever the customer provides should work. And then it's gonna pre-populate a shipping date of today or the current day that you, you're creating a shipping label. Uh, you can modify this if you'd like. Uh, maybe you know it's not gonna ship out to the future so you can uh, go ahead and, and push that out a little bit. And there's a checkbox setting here to update the channel with the shipment details after your purchase. 
by default, we're automatically going to select this. And what that means is once you purchase the, the shipping label, it's automatically going to generate that tracking number, uh, apply it to this order, and submit that back to your sales channel um, so your customer gets notified. Um, if you do know, you know, it might be a good process if there's, if you know, there's going to be a delay on the shipment or, you know, it's going to take some time to, to pick, pack and fill it. Uh, maybe you don't check that uh, just as a way to kind of prevent them from seeing that tracking and expecting it to ship that same day. Uh, but definitely that's up to you. Just a use case there if you uh, want to modify that. And you see down on the next line here, we have our line items from this order. So uh, all the SKUs that were on this purchase order for that source are gonna populate here. It's gonna pre-populate with the, the shipment quantity of what was ordered. And it's also gonna pre-populate with the item weight that we are receiving uh, from your source data for these items. And this will come into play for the overall weights of the package to calculate those shipping rates. You can modify this, um, you know, if you do know that maybe some of these line items aren't going to be going out on this package. So you can remove these and add another shipment or uh, shipping label later on as well um, to split that up, depending on how these items are going to be shipping um, from your source or your warehouse if you're using this in that manner. So the next step is gonna be selecting the package. Uh, you can come over here and click add in package, this uh, link up in the upper right corner, and that's gonna open up a package selection pop out. Uh, so under carrier packaging, we're gonna have this pre-populated with standard packages and boxes from your carriers. Uh, so if we go to UPS, we can see their, their default boxes. And if we go look at USPS, we can see all available boxes that they have. If you're shipping out with your own packaging, you can actually come in here and create custom packaging and name it. Um, that way it'll have the length, width, and height added to it. You can also apply a weight for that, that packaging itself. And what will happen is we calculate the total weight of the shipment with all the item weights plus the package weight to get you to your final weight for that shipment. Um, so if we go here and select one of the USPS packages, um, so let's say this is going in a large flat rate box and I'll click add a package. So you can see here, it's going to pre-populate with the package dimensions and plus the package weight. And that's going to get us a total weight when we add up all of the individual line item weights with that package weight and get there. And again, you can modify this. Maybe some of your uh, packing materials adds a bit of weight to it. Um, so you can always modify this if you need to, to get more of a, 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 uh, a closer weight to your, your final total package there. Then the next step here is going to be adding a shipping method. Um, so this is going to be the way that it, it ships out and you can check the rates for this. Um, so if we go and check weights for this package and this method. So this method is what is attached to the, uh, the global method on the source shipping method that's selected for this order. So it's automatically going to tie into that and calculate this based on that rate. Um, so when, once we click check rates, it's going to find that global method. So this is set as USPS priority mail. And it's going to calculate the total shipment for this size package and the total weight. So this package to ship out will be $19.30. Then we also have an option here to choose a, a label size. By default, we're going to choose the, the four by six. But if necessary, you can choose the eight and a half by 11 uh, to apply it to this order. Any questions so far on the packaging or the weights or the custom packaging? Nope, nothing yet. All right, so let's move on. So once you filled out this page, the last step is to actually buy the shipping label. 
Um, so when you do this, this will actually go through your ship engine account, purchase the label through your account. Right now I'm in a sandbox environment. Um, so it's not actually going to purchase it, but it'll all flow properly here. So I click the buy shipping label button. It's gonna give me all the details for the shipment, the origin address, the destination address for the customer, the shipment date, and all the details we filled out above. If all that looks good, you can click purchase. And it's gonna come up to a next screen here. Uh, so when we uh, generate the shipping label and purchase it, uh, essentially this is asking us how do we wanna save this, uh, the image of the shipping label. Um, so maybe you're sending it to your warehouse or a supplier that has a specific format that they're needing. Um, so we have the three main formats used, the PDF file, we can do a PNG image file or a ZPL file uh, for our attachments for these shipping labels. So if we go ahead, let's choose a PNG for this one and click attach. Once I do that, we can see our purchase order section here for this order. Now we have a label here that the shipping label has been purchased. So now we know that this has been purchased for this PO. And there's an attachments button here where we can actually view this shipping label. So if we view this, this is shown as a big sample because I'm still in the sandbox environment, but this would be the shipping label that would be uh, generated for this order. Um, this, uh, you can download this and use it here. Maybe you're managing it through your own warehouse. You can do it this way and just print it off there. Or if we're gonna be sending the PO, uh, whether it's via email or to an FTP folder, this attachment, uh, the shipping label attachment will be a secondary attachment on the email in that file format you specified. Or if we're sending this to an FTP integration, this will be a secondary file that's posted to that FTP directory uh, where we're dropping the, the purchase orders as well. So depending on the system that you're using or the requirements of your source or warehouse that you're using the shipping labels for, that's just kind of dependent on how you have that set up on where the shipping label will go. Um, also under the, the attachments here, you can delete this uh, shipping label. Just note here, this doesn't actually delete the shipment that you purchased. It's just a way to clear the label out of FlexPoint. Um, if you do need to, to cancel that, that label, um, you can do so through the, the ship engine um, dashboard that you have already created. Oh, I had a question come in, didn't catch that. Does the shipping label have the reseller's store information as the sent from? Let's look, I didn't see that either. Uh, so it does. So this would populate based on the, if we go back. Uh, can't edit this. Uh, so on the, the origin address, um, depending on what you populate there, that's what's going to be plugged in to the, the from field on the shipping label. I think that that answers your question there. So whatever you set on the origin information, it will will be what's on that shipping label. Oh, sorry. Just accidentally closed the chat. I think something else came through. Okay, we're good. So once we have that label purchased, we can process this PO that will get sent to, again, to the, the source, whether that's your own warehouse or a supplier that you're working with. And again, if it's via email, we'll attach the PO and also a secondary attachment for the shipping label. And if it's going to an FTP, we will send the PO to the FTP and then have a secondary file sent as well with the shipping label so they can use that accordingly. Uh, another thing to note, if you are using this in conjunction with the vendor portal, so if you have a supplier that's using your vendor portal to, to manage POs and shipments, um, if you have it set up with them that you're going to purchase a shipping label and provide it, the shipping label will automatically uh, be sent into the vendor portal along with the purchase order. So your supplier who's using that or your vendor who's using that will see that attachment and can download it 
print it out and slap it on the shipment. So that way it's all kind of in one place and easy to manage for them. Um, it automatically gets sent over there once the order is processed. So there's really no extra steps you need to take with the vendor portal. It's going to flow into there seamlessly for you. Any other questions so far on this? All right, that's that's the uh, the process for setting up the the shipping labels going through the the ship engine account, uh, generating and purchasing the shipping label based on your your package dimensions and your total order dimensions and weight. Um, there are some some questions I'll go through that I, I've seen come in kind of regularly about this. Um, so one of the main questions is, do, I, do you need to enter your billing information in Ship Engine? Yes, you do. Um, so the Ship Engine account is yours. You're purchasing their shipping labels through them. Uh, we have a direct integration with them to, to provide this service, um, but you still are responsible for, for paying for the shipping labels um, and going through that. So that's why you do need to put in your billing information in Ship Engine so you can uh, you know, pay for those as you go. Uh, you most of their account is a pay as you go system. Um, so it only charges um, a few cents and fractions of a cent per transaction. Um, but you can go in there um, for that and you know purchase the shipping labels through them using that. Um, so is the billing information ship engine used for the shipping charges? So no. So the ship engine uh, payment is is for the transactions with them to leverage that. So again, like I said, the the, the payments going to ship engine are very minimal, like pennies or even fractions of a penny. Um, so that's why you do have to tie in your shipping accounts in the ship engine because uh, it's good. Ship engine connects to those, and when you purchase a shipping label it's going to actually, UPS will charge you for that um, uh, shipping label purchase and that, that shipment cost or UPS or USPS, depending on which one you're using for that. Um, so it's it's might be a little confusing there, but just know ship engine is charging you for the transactions to connect to your carriers and then the actual payment for the shipment still kind of flows through ship engine, but you're charged by your carriers. Um, so what carriers uh, does Ship Engine have access to? Um, so currently through Ship Engine, we only support um, FedEx Canada and US, DHL Express, OnTrack, uh, UPS, and then USPS and stamps.com. Um, right now, those are our main supported ones. But if there is a need that you have, uh, maybe there's another carrier that Ship Engine provides that you don't uh, that we don't support currently. Um, definitely reach out to our support team and, and we can look at evaluating that and getting it added for you as kind of a one off use case. Um, so definitely ask if it's not there and you're requiring it and we can definitely help you out and, and look to get that added for you. Um, and I touched on this earlier. If you are using rate shopping as a, a calculation uh, point in FlexPoint, it was one of our earlier feature releases kind of in regards to this. Um, do you have to set up a new ship engine account? And, and yes, you do. Um, that was a free account that was set up. Um, it doesn't have the, the purchase shipping labels permissions and doesn't have access to your billing information. Um, so you would need to go through, set up your own personal ship engine account. Um, following that link that I, I showed earlier, and that will allow you to go through. And again, if you already had a free account on that rate shopping, once you create the your personal account through Ship Engine, all that will automatically update, and your rate shopping will use this new account. All right. Um, so I'll open this up to, to any QA questions, uh, you know, generally on FlexPoint or through uh, shipping labels. If there's any questions in regards to any of that, definitely please let me know. I'll give you all a few minutes to put your questions in the chat and I'll be right.
All right, I had a question come in about uh, setting up a source. Um, they're receiving an error in regards to missing mapped headers. Uh, so essentially what that, that error means is on the, the file that is being read by FlexPoint and on that mapping template, uh, there are headers in the mapping template that they're not finding on the file. Um, so if I go pull up a mapping sheet for this. Let's find a mapping here. So essentially what those errors are saying when it says missing these mapped headers um, is that the column header that's showing here is not visible on that file. Um, sometimes there might be, if you generate a, a default underneath product options or attributes, there may be a pre-mapped option on here. So just double check all these and make sure that it's not looking for one of those. Um, if you checked all that and you're still getting the errors and it's pulling up quite a few headers that, that say it's missing. And I've seen this happen a few times and it's it's gotten me as well, is in the integration, if we go back to our settings here, a lot of times, if you have the file format incorrect here, say you're trying to upload an XLSX file and this is selected as a CSV, that'll give you that same error. So just double check that and it would either be typically the column headers are, are not matching or double check for maybe spaces leading on the column headers that you've input or spaces trailing. And then also double check the file formats here. And this should that should solve the problem for you and be able to get the file to import successfully and not receive any other errors. All right, I'm well, not seeing any more questions come in. Um, so we can cut this a little bit short today, let everyone get back. I know uh, everyone kind of has a short week and probably has quite a, a bit more work to do today due to the holiday on Monday. So I'll give everyone a little bit of their afternoon back here. I uh, appreciate everyone joining today. Um, again, this uh, recording will be posted to our YouTube channel and our uh, website by the end of the week. And definitely check out um, our upcoming webinars. If any of our interest to you, feel free to sign up there. If you have any of your questions, uh, feel free to reach out to support at flexpoint.com and we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks.